there we are. Welcome, welcome. I am so grateful and honored to be here sharing this program and this invitation into what is it like to have a yoga therapy career? What does it look like to join this training? What is the difference even between yoga, which everyone thinks of as like the Western yoga land, modern postural yoga, and yoga therapy or yoga chikitsa have to do with each other? So I'm Jeanette, and I'm so honored if you're here live, if you're watching later, go ahead and reach out and let me know if you have questions. Um, there's going to be a very special announcement in this live and a special invitation if you're thinking of joining us. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go through a little presentation. The whole thing is going to take about maybe 40, 45 minutes. I'm just going to share a little bit, like I said, about yoga therapy, a little bit about our training, and then we'll have time for a Q&A. So uh, the announcement is towards the end. So if you want to hear that, please stay on for that. Uh, it's going to be a very special offering just for those who attended this workshop. Okay. So if you are here, just let me know if you if you know the difference between yoga and yoga therapy. Just drop a one in the chat. If you're like, I didn't even know they were two different things, go ahead and drop a two in the chat, please. So thank you. Yoga therapy is a system for total health. It is for sick people, for well people, for children all the way through till those at the end of their lives. And when I say it's a system for total health, this is the definition of health. I want to begin there because everybody has maybe a different idea of what health looks like. It's, it's incredibly subjective and individualized. But overall, the World Health Organization describes health as a state of complete mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So I'll tell you a little bit about my background very quickly. I spent about two decades in skilled nursing facilities working in recreation. I was a direct care member and then I became a director and then I became a regional director and a VP of operations for a healthcare company. And through that time, my roles changed significantly, but the level of what I was doing never changed. And that was bringing a sense of well being to the residents of these facilities through this whole person approach, this holistic, whole, whole person approach to well being. And this is where yoga came into play. <laughs> And that was when I began. And so it was always a part of my life. And a long time, it just looked like modern postural yoga, just going to a class, doing some movements, having the breath and the movement synchronized. But something magic happened in that time. As you know, I'm sure we all have our own story of what brought us to yoga. But wasn't there something that called you deeper that made you say, what is this? And I want to know more because you feel a certain way. And maybe it's something along the lines of what the World Health Organization says, that you feel physically, mentally, and socially well. You feel connected. Maybe you feel relaxed in a way that you haven't explored before. And this can happen even in the middle of disease or infirmity, this sense of well-being. I'm going to go to the next slide. So in the Shishuta Samhita, one of the main texts of Ayurveda, Ayurveda and yoga are two systems that cannot be separated. They're inextricably linked. And in yoga therapy, we look through this lens. Sama dosha, sama agnisha, sama datu malakriyaha, prasanatma indraya, manaha swasta ityabhite, abhitayate. This means when One's doshas are balanced. The doshas are the ways that the five elements work within our being. And they have three potential combinations, vata, pitta, and kapha. And it's the way that vata's air and ether, kind of maybe we're very thin and very light and very airy and creative. Or maybe we're more a pitta and we have more fire and water and we're more driven and motivated and charismatic and prone to intensity or maybe we're more kapha more earth and water and we're more nourishing and more steady and stable and loyal 
whatever the nature of our doshas are, when they are in balance, when the mala is in balance, when our, when our waste processes and our body's elimination processes are in balance, when our mind and our emotions are in balance, which happens through the breath, this is the meaning of health, or we call it swasta. And swasta, swastaha, means to be situated in the self. So I don't know about you, but when I first started meditation practice, oh my gosh, I was 18 and I could not sit still for five minutes. <laughs> I really couldn't. I was not situated in the self and it doesn't just mean sitting still, but stillness of the body brings stillness of the mind, which is part of the whole process of yoga. But this discomfort with stillness and quiet and the need to be constantly engaged or active, our senses moving and interacting with the world in such a way that there's always input coming in, when we can actually retract our attention a little bit inward and find a sense of calm in the breath and a sense of stillness in the body, that's when we become situated in the self, the self of the self. And this is swasta. This is health according to Ayurveda and yogic tradition. And the teachings tell us so much about this. The teachings tell us when the breath is steady, the emotions become balanced. When the body is still, the mind becomes still. And we can consciously focus to become present in the moment, whether we're washing the dishes or walking down the street or moving through our day. How can we bring our attention and awareness again and again gently to the present moment. And when we do this, and then we add on integrating the breath with co coordinated body movements, literally all areas of human biological functioning are improved. Now there's a lot of research around this. This has been studied and studied though, which is amazing to see. If you are like me and, and appreciate a science-minded approach to things, However, that can take us away from the tradition, but I won't go into that too deeply right now. But I will tell you, we are going to look at research and discover how to read research because a part of this training as yoga therapy, for example, this beautiful research study here published in Frontiers in Human Neuroscience talks about how breath control can change your life. A systematic review on psychophysiological correlates of slow breathing. So changing the rhythms and patterns of our breath changes the nervous system, right? It's pretty, pretty obvious, but there are some beautiful studies around this that show exactly what is happening in the mechanisms of the brain and body neurobiological connection, what is happening to the central nervous system as well as the cardiovascular system. Is our heart rate decreasing, our pulse and respiration improving? The oxygenation of our cells and cellular respiration is improving. There's so much beautiful evidence around this right now. And I'm going to go back to my screen share. <laughs> oh boy, sorry, I'm losing it. I'm going to stop for a second and then go back. But we're going to show you the research. We're going to show you how to read research critically, how to think about it in a way that you know you know and, and have the skillfulness and the clarity to understand what works and what works when and what situations we would be using certain practices and the evidence around it so that you can bring it to hospitals to nursing homes to um newborns and mamas and the world all around so these are just some of the studies and some of the documented improvements in health. And I really saw this. I worked at Deborah Heart and Lung Center for a while, bringing yoga therapy to open heart surgery patients very shortly after their surgeries. And these are all the ways that yoga therapy helps to improve well-being and vitality and overall health. It helps your mental health, like things like de depression, anxiety, and the stress response. It improves your physical health, improves flexibility, strength, and balance, and overall physical function. It improves balance 
and muscle strength in specifically adults with knee osteoarthritis. And this was just one study that had really positive outcomes. But ultimately, it's increasing interoception and that is the way that the body and brain communicate and so when the body and the brain are communicating better and we have an understanding of what's happening internally the messages from our body we are more likely to feel better to function better to move better to breathe better so this has long-standing you know beautiful benefits that last and last as long as you have a consistent and steady practice. Yoga therapy improves sleep. It helps people with insomnia. There's a lot of work around yoga therapy for people with trauma. It improves your cardiovascular health. And you wouldn't think of this because it's not necessarily cardiovascular exercise. But again, when we improve heart rate variability, our cholesterol improves, our blood pressure regulates, and overall, Yoga therapy has been found to be effective in improving such a wide range of physical and mental health conditions. Um, so lots of beautiful things that it can do for you. And in the program, in a little bit today, we're going to talk about how and why. Why does it improve all of these areas of life? Why are the studies, the innumerable studies out there right now showing the benefits of yoga therapy? Well, the first one is down to the eight limbed path, the basics of the yamas and niyamas, which we'll go over, but they improve social health. There are the moral and ethical restraints in which we interact with the world. So we may be interacting in the world in such a way that we're cultivating contentment and we're practicing non-harming and we're having a sense of faith in, in goodness, faith in the goodness of the universe. The pranayama and the asana, the breath practice, there's many breathing practices in yoga, very different from breath work, but they improve physical health. And the asana, the body postures, asana means seat, but it's the way that we place our body in certain ways and forms that build strength and flexibility and balance that improves our physical well-being. Then we have dharana and pratyahara, and pratyahara is sense withdrawal, as I mentioned earlier, like if you think about your day, as you go through your day, is there ever a time when your senses are not overly active? We're eating or socializing or on our electronics or on social media. What is happening throughout your day and how much of your day is dedicated to withdrawing attention inward? And when we cultivate a practice that does that, oh, how beautiful. And dharana, of course, is when we do that, we find that steadiness in the self, that situated withdrawal and then focus on the inner and sometimes on the outer. Sometimes we use external points for focus, whether it's yantra, which is like a visual image or sacred geometry. We might focus on a flame for trataka meditation, a candle flame. So there are ways to focus attention outward. But either way, it's that one pointed awareness that we cultivate, which allows the mind to rest and steady, which leads to spiritual health. It quiets the emotions. It leads to a sense of well-being and samadhi and dhyana. Dhyana is meditation or that kind of where the one pointed focus leads to that loss of time a little bit, which leads to samadhi or self-realization when we realize our interconnectedness with all of life all things all beings and the self of the self so this is one of the lenses that we use to look through with yoga therapy and then we come to the panchamaya kosha model and this is the five layered self so if you imagine like an onion there are multiple layers to the self and there's the physical layer, which is all of the food body, the, the meat, the muscle, the bone, the tissue, the tangible physical body. And then there's the breath layer, the pranamaya kosha, or the body that is subtle, that we can't see, but it's still tangible enough that it can change our state. It can change our mental, emotional state. Again, when we study the breath. Our breathing patterns can be indicators of 
a lot of things that are going on physically and emotionally. Like if you're scared, does your breath increase and your heart rate increase? And if you are in pain, maybe you tend to hold your breath or like breathe in a really shallow capacity. So they're all woven throughout together and it's so beautiful. So physical breath and then mental, emotional, and then the intellect and the wisdom body, the intuition, the deeper, deeper parts that tell us what is really true for us. And finally, the innermost layer, according to the yoga tradition, is bliss, that our natural state, our innermost state, the state that is most connected with the truth of ourselves is bliss. But we have to, I thought I had a picture here, so I apologize, but we have to penetrate all of these other layers, the physical layer. If you imagine if you are actively fighting a disease process, we cannot necessarily or not easily access the bliss body. It feels very disproportionate in its accessibility. And so yoga works through and with all of these layers to help us remember Help us remember the self of the self and our true nature. So it's so beautiful to share. If you have been a student of yoga for a long time, you know the feeling. Maybe it's what calls you to be a teacher or a therapist. This awareness of the depth of the practice and the gifts that it can give you. All right. So let me know if you have any questions so far. Feel free to type them into the chat and I'm going to move into a little bit about our yoga therapy foundations program which is beginning so soon and i have a very special announcement about it um, that i'll be offering in, in just a few moments and i see that cat is joining in um, welcome welcome so good to see you perfect timing <laughs> as things are and generally tend to be right we find the right people in the right time the right yoga studio that feels like home in the right moment and maybe the right training in the right time too. So we have some incredible faculty. I'm so blown away by and honored that all of these beautiful teachers and therapists and students of the yoga tradition, longtime students and teachers have agreed to be part of this and we're coming together to create something so beautiful and meaningful that's going to take you as the student very deep into the teachings of yoga. There is this sacredness and intensity and beauty of practicing and learning virtually that is so individualized because you're doing it in your own home, on your own time, in such a way that it's at your own pace and it makes you feel really good. So I'm going to just take you through a little bit about of our faculty here. Again, we're all renowned stewards of the tradition, teachers and lead faculty members, as well as some incredible guest speakers. So I'll share with you first about Kaya. Kaya, I met Kaya about two years ago, and I've been practicing again for 30. And instantly she became one of my favorite teachers of all time. She's a beautiful lineage holder who brings you yoga that is so different from maybe what you've experienced before in a way that honors the nectar of yoga and the promise of that that is you can lovingly transform your life kaya is lead faculty on this training in addition to myself and she's really the go-to teacher for those seeking pedagogy the, the skillfulness in teaching and passing on the tradition from student to teacher in a way that holds deep integrity and meaning and honoring of the tradition. Um, so Kaya is incredible. You're going to get to practice with her every Tuesday. You're also going to get some deep dive study opportunities with her on various yoga teachings. And then we have Nidhi, and Nidhi is doing a lot of our Ayurvedic portion of the training. Nidhi is a third generation Ayurvedic practitioner. She is so skillful. I took my first course with Nidhi uh, about a year ago. It was uh, a yoga Sanskrit um, Ashtanga Hridayam course, which is one of the main texts of Ayurveda. And she made this ancient complex text 
so digestible and so simple that this complex system of medicine became incredibly accessible to all of us who are learning some of us for the first time. I've been doing practicing Ayurveda for 15 years or so, but some of the students study with Nidhi for the very first time and really can hone in on the most important aspects of the tradition, the way only true masters can teach and simplify it in such a way that it's really applicable and relevant to your life and to the lives of those you serve. So she's teaching Ayurveda in our course. I'm so excited. Well, we have next. These are mostly the lead faculty. I'm going to go quicker through, not because there are any less, but there's just less time. But Alexandria is teaching another huge portion. She developed the yoga physics program. She's a brilliant minded, advanced teacher who is masterful in her way to weave in yoga anatomy, biomechanics and physiology and teach it in a way that deconstructs a lot of the like common misunderstandings around anatomy as applies to yoga and breaks it down to make it sustainable and accessible and basically that you can teach yoga to everybody, every body, every phase of life. What, how do you take asana and access some of the benefits of it and weave it and break it down so that it's completely available to people of all ages, levels and abilities? And I'm kind of like teaching a lot too, but I'm also guiding you through this in a mentorship way. So um, it's very aligned and resonant with the way that I teach. All of the teachers are my teachers, <laughs> which also is really important to me. Swamini Ji, my, my main teacher of yoga, um, she is an incredible human being who runs an ashram out in Pennsylvania, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing yoga. And I began studying with her about 15 years ago when I had a bad knee injury and a deeply traumatic event in my life that left me seeking something deeper than what I had experienced in yoga before. And I am so grateful to have found her. She shares the practice with such depth. She became a Swamini a few years ago and has been devoted and of service to her communities that she's part of in such a big way. She's developed hospital based yoga therapy programs. She offers spiritual counseling, Vedic yogic tradition, deeper understandings, and she's going to be teaching a bit in the course as well. So some philosophy, yoga for grief and trauma recovery, and a deep dive into yin. The curriculum is so beautiful. Melissa Smith, she's going to be teaching restorative and somatics. Somatics is such a big word right now. Everybody wants to know what that is. Um, Melissa is going to break it down for us. She's going to make it really accessible. Somatics is soma means of the body in Greek and soma in Sanskrit means nectar, this kind of nectar of immortality. And so the idea is that there is a nectar in the body that we can access and how do we step out of the, the chitta vritti, the mind stuff and come home to the body and see it as the wisdom library that it is and be in the body and of the body in a way that feels good. And that's what somatics is. <laughs> so she's going to weave us into that and she's going to take us on a deep dive into restorative yoga, yoga nidra um, and sh sorry, Shavasana. Kai is teaching yoga nidra. And, but Shavasana is the first step to have true yoga nidra or yogic sleep. You have to have a comfortable position in the body where you can surrender your attachment to the body. And so Melissa is a beautiful teacher and healthcare professional who's going to be here teaching us that. Dawn is a yoga therapist. She's going to be teaching us all about the most important thing about our foundation our feet. <laughs> it's very true, but we'll learn to examine gait patterns. We'll learn about the body and the breath and the way that the feet impact everything that happens in the body. We'll learn about ground reaction forces and really geeky biomechanical things, but things that are really important when making asana accessible to all, even in our own bodies as we age, as we grow, as we change. We want to know these things about our bodies. Abigail is an incredible social justice advocate, an incredible 
teacher of the embodied life method and she weaves somatics and social justice and she's going to come and share a bit about that because i didn't feel a yoga training is complete without a talk about social justice and activism and how the practice looks off the mat and in our lives sarva no, they're all my teachers i love this every time i look at their faces i'm like oh i love this person <laughs> Sarva is my Ayurvedic postpartum care teacher, and she's going to be coming in to do one of the electives. If you choose the 40 hours in perinatal health, you're going to study with me and Sarva and Nidhi for yoga therapy and Ayurveda and just indigenous practices that support women all throughout their perinatal period, whether they're in their fertility phase or they're pregnant, or they're postpartum and beyond, you're going to learn the women's health approach through yoga and Ayurveda. And of course me, <laughs> as I said, I will be mentoring you throughout the whole program. I'll be calling in special guest teachers from time to time. You're going to have case studies and I'll be overseeing those. You're going to have the healthcare initiative with me, which is another 40 hour elective of taking yoga into healthcare settings whether it's hospitals, nursing homes, you know, doctor's offices, creating referral-based networks with your community so that you can really serve those who need it most. We're going to have such a good time. I'm going to be teaching Marma Chikitsa, which is another touch-based therapy, which is so beautiful and nourishing and restorative. And I'll be sharing my experiences and be here for you, for your questions and for the integration of all of this so that when you are complete, you feel like you know what you're doing. You have a sense of confidence. You have a sense of joy in how you're sharing it. And you have a sense that you're aligned with what you're here to do and how you're here to share it. There's no cookie cutter teaching in this in this offering. I've seen so many yoga teacher trainings that just do cookie cutter, say this and cue this way. I don't even use the word cueing. <laughs> There's no cookie cutter approach. You're gonna learn how to look at a person and see the whole person, how to help them through difficult phases or joyful ones, how to bring them together in community or how to serve one-on-one. -on -one. And it's my honor to invite you into this program. So two very special offerings about it. You can download this guide. I'll make that available to you in the follow-up email with this recording. And you can take your time to look through it, the core curriculum, which is 120 hours, and then the choose your own adventure electives, which take you either deeper into yoga teachings, deeper into perinatal care or health care. You can decide to go in the realm of yoga nidra, which is yogic sleep and deep rest and meditation, works beautifully with people with trauma, or you can learn Marma Chikitsa. Um, you can choose so many different options too, because there's you know, a whole host, 130 hours of electives for you to choose from. So there's so much beautiful, beautiful threads that are weaving together in this program, beautiful teachers and the program is so rich and so full. And it's going to prepare you for everything you need to know in order to show up and teach therapeutic yoga. Um, so that is all I have for this moment. I promised you that I was going to give you a special invitation in addition to the special announcement. So if you are ready, if you are ready to sign up in the next 24 hours, I'm going to gift to you, we are going to gift to you, Kaya Minlin's program, The Nectar of Time. So I'm going to send out a lot more beautiful information about this in the email. But Kaya, let me go back to Kaya so you can have her face here while I talk about her. She, again, is lead faculty in this training, and she has a beautiful adjunct program to one you're getting access to already, which is the Supreme Release Yoga Every Tuesday class. She has a program called the Nectar of Time, and this is a storytelling program that takes you through uh, Jyotesh, the Vedic astrology, and how time plays a role in what we're experiencing in any given moment. 
she'll share and weave in sacred teachings and recipes and again like i said stories in such a way that help you embrace yoga as a part of your daily life from moment to moment season to season holiday celebration and more so that is so incredibly exciting that's for the next 24 hours only and i'll send out more information about that program to kaya's nectar of time if you are interested in the virtual training there's still time to sign up or though it's slipping away so reach out so with that i'm going to close out and open up for questions if you're watching later you'll receive a link to schedule a one-on-one -on -one chat with me and a link to sign up if you're just ready we have three different payment options payment plans are available we have a couple of scholarships available for those that qualify we have some criteria around that of course but whatever the case may be we want this training to be nourishing and accessible and joyful for every participant so very warmly welcome you in and i will stop talking i will stop the recording and open up times for a q a as always, feel free to reach out and be well. Oh.